And let's just examine what we're going to do going forward here, and then we'll try to get into a different page and, and utilize some of this. So we could just grab that web page, um, and this soup item would contain that web page that we fe fetched. And, you know, to do everything that we just did in that last video, which was, you know, grab the HTML, grab the body, grab the B tag, and kind of dig our way down to where we get that uh, text by sort of working through each one of the children. In this case, that web page only contains this one p tag right so there's only one in this web page so we could do a soup dot find all and then p inside of it, and it would just grab that p tag any p tag that exists in the page would be pulled right here's the difference we will see two different things we will see find and we will see find all. And the difference is find all finds everything. Find will find the first match and stop. And there are different times when we want to do that. So if we were to use find all, it would just find that one P tag, which would be at the zero position in the array. We could run get text and we'd get the same result. Pretty obvious. We could also run soup.findp and uh, we could print that and it would show us the same thing. And again, we could do a get text on that. Now, web pages are going to contain a lot of these, and most web pages, all web pages, the tags have classes and they have IDs that are uniquely identifying the pieces that you want. And we're going to take a look at that inside Ars Technica here in a second. Like when there is a tag on a web page, that tag is going to be associated with a cascading style sheet. And that cascading style sheet is either going to have an ID, a class, or both that uniquely identifies it. So here's a P tag that has this inner text first item class. Doesn't matter how that's positioned or what that means. We just know that there's only one of them that has, you know, both of these classes. And so if we were to fetch this web page, we could do a soup.findall. We could say find all P tags with a comma, and we could pass it this class underscore selector and say, okay, only find P tags that are a member of the outer text class. We can do the same thing for ID. See, we could say find all, and we could say only find tags uh, that have the ID of first, and it would pull those in. So using those class selectors is kind of important as well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to dig in a little bit. You might want to finish reading that tutorial page. Look with it, look at it, play with it. This web scraping stuff is super valuable. I can tell you the folks that go to Booz Allen, uh, they immediately uh, get charged with scraping data in different ways and using beautiful soup is a big part of that. Um, so we have this sample page here. Let's go ahead and save modified buffer. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to my home folder and let's MKDIR. I will call this uh, soup2 just to have a new one because then you can go back into your original program and kind of evaluate what's happening here. I'm going to pico scraper.py again inside of soup2 and we are going to start over here. So let's make it look like. Uh, let's do our imports. We're going to import requests because we're going to need that. And uh, from BS4, import beautiful soup. We'll, we'll get a page using requests equals requests. Oops, that should be an equal sign. Dot get. And in this case, we're going to take a look at uh, Ars Technica. We could create a program that keeps us up to date on all of the Ars Technica articles, for example. ArsTechnica.com, just like that. We're going to go to that web page in a second. Let's pull it into a soup object equals, we'll look at this page in a second. Beautiful soup, and we're going to say page.content, all the content on the page, HTML parser.
And uh, let's just test it to make sure it works. And let's do a print soup dot printify just like that. So stop, make your web page look like that inside of our new parser. I'm going to save this. I'm going to run python scraper.py and it should pull down the Ars Technica website, their front page here. All of this stuff. So pause the video, get to the point where that worked. So let's do a practical example and let's say we want to pull all of the titles that we see on this web page and we want to maybe publish that to our own web page where it's like here are the top titles on Ars Technica now and so we have all of these titles here and images we could grab images too um, we might do that that appear to have a similar font they appear to have a similar positioning inside of these blocks. Some of these are a little different down here. Who knows? We'd have to take a look. So if we right click and we choose view page source, let's take a look at that. And I'm going to look for one of these. So I'll Google for team behind the Russian, just team behind in a second. And so under view source here, oops, let's go up to the top and I'll search for team behind. Now, when you're doing this, Ars Technica may not have that article up. So find an article and do a search for it. And so here inside of our source, we've got this list item, right? And that list item has a class of T's article. Um, it's got, let's see here. We've got an article, we've got an href here. Uh, we've got the actual title itself here in the text. And when we click on the title, it takes us to this link here. So that's incorporated inside of, we have an H2 tag that's inside of an LI tag. And when we identify this, when we look at it, we could say realistically, and every page is different when you're scraping. You have to figure out how it's built. Every page is organized in a certain way. So I could say whenever I see an LI that has a class of T's article, within that there will be a child item of H2 that's going to contain a link and it's going to contain a title. So that's sort of identifying there. Now let's see if we can put that to uh, use. All right, so let's get rid of our soup.prettify because that was just a test and let's pull the title. So I'll create a variable called titles and I'll set it equal to soup.findAll and we want to find all li tags comma that have a class underscore equals and then the, what we saw in the class there was they all had a class name of T's article. And let's see what that's going to return. So I'll go ahead and I'll print titles just for starters. Save it. Make it look like that. And let's run our scraper here. All right, so that pulled a bunch of stuff that's super unreadable, right? Um, and so there's a lot there, kind of hard to see what happened. So what I would do in this situation is I would say, okay, I don't want to scroll through all that. This is one of those times when I would run it and I would pump it to like test.txt to put it into a file, grab that web page again and do that thing, and then pico test.txt to take a look at it and see what we've got here. And you can see we've got an li here and we've got an li at the end and it looks like we're pulling down pretty much what we need to. Those li tags are being itemized here. I'm not exactly sure and it'd be hard to tell. So let's do something else. I'm going to go back into my um, and let's print titles. Uh, I think it's length of titles. So let's let's do it this way. Let's print, I think it's like this, we're going to find out. Let's print the length of titles and see how many there are. Okay. 
And so by printing the length, I can see, okay, we pulled in 34 li tags. That works pretty good. Let's go back to our source here and let's verify that. If I do a search for T's article, it pulls in 36 instances of, of T's article. So there were 34 that we pulled. The search here says 36. We're doing pretty good. We're right about where we should be in terms of what we're pulling down. So I'm relatively certain at this point that what I did there is pulling in blocks like this. Awesome. If we have it looking like that, I'm going to say pause the video. There's no turn in after uh, this particular section. And in the next video, we're going to move forward and create something that uh, begins to become readable.